Many of Europe's governments face worker protests today. Can nations ever get their people to buy into cutbacks, or will that anger put the recovery at risk for everyone? Let's ask Julian Callow, because he's chief economist at Barclays Capital and a member of the ECB Shadow Council as well. As well. Good to see you again, Julian. So right. let me ask you about these protests that are taking place right across Europe, what, in 12 countries. I suppose, yet again, this highlights the obstacles and the risks of austerity measures. Well, that's right. I guess we've discussed this uh, before, really. I, I think it is going to be getting very difficult as, as the months go by, really. The governments have, of course, committed themselves to reducing deficits, but there's a difference between making that top-down level of commitment and actually implementing and actually executing uh, the deficit cutbacks. And, and when it really comes to it, that does ultimately mean cutting jobs, uh, cutting other kinds of benefits, uh, cutting services. Uh, and th there are going to be lots of protests uh, against against that and it is going to be very treacherous uh, for governments. In Greece we've seen a lot of cutbacks of course uh, but that's been because the whole country has been in an absolute crisis with, with the IMF mm. and the EU involvement but for other countries it is going to be a shock including I would add uh, for the UK as, as we go forward and it's a, going to be a multi-year shock because all the best plans of governments here uh, are still noting that deficits are going to be very, very large uh, over the next two to three years. Uh, but just the incremental pace of deficit reduction amounting to between 1% and 2% of GDP per year uh, is actually very, very substantial when you're dealing with ageing populations and ever-increasing demands on health budgets, etc. And a remarkable discrepancy, Julian, between what is happening on the street, people protesting mm. austerity measures, and what we've seen happening in the markets where yeah. peripheral bond spreads have been widening. Investors are saying it's not good enough. Well, uh, that's right. And, and again, you know, in each case, if you look at the bond market investors, they're fearing the worst, perhaps. Uh, if you look at uh, the, the behaviour uh, of, of what's happening within the political society, uh, again, uh, th there is resistance uh, there. So, you know, we haven't really started the process uh, so far, and yet uh, we're still getting uh, th these very obvious uh, tensions. Um, it is just enormously difficult. Some of these countries have got themselves into a gigantic hole. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult uh, to climb uh, uh, back out of there. I mean, if we take Ireland, uh, for example, l last year, if you strip out uh, the financial bailout costs, um, Ireland was still running a budget deficit mm. of around 11.5% of GDP, and it's likely to be similar to that again this year, even despite all the budget we had last and year. And Julian, on the subject of Ireland, Central Bank is said to be preparing mm. another injection of cash for Anglo-Irish. Will mm. another $5 billion really be enough? Uh, it's questionable. Uh, really, I mean, I don't think that people will have full confidence here uh, until they see good signs that uh, the real estate prices have hit bottom. In Ireland, uh, residential prices have actually fallen by about a third since their peak. Nominal GDP is down about 18% since its peak. Um, there's some signs of stability emerging in nominal GDP, but uh, there's still a lot of excess uh, in, in the stock of housing and the stock of commercial real estate. Uh, and so while there is that downwards pressure on real estate prices, there's also going to be concern that there will be additional new bailout costs heading uh, from the banks, which will have to be paid by the governments. And in amongst efforts by European governments to work their way out of this crisis, Julian, ongoing discussions about how we can prevent another Greece, another Spain from happening. Germany has been calling for sanctions on countries which allow their debt to spiral out of control. Mm. There are divisions in Europe about this. France thinks it should be more of a political decision. Mm. What is the right way forward here? Can we prevent another Greece from happening again? I mean, it is so difficult because uh, you don't have a federal Europe. If you had a federal Europe, you might have the political mechanisms in place to resolve this uh, much more easily. But you don't have that with all the panoply of fiscal transfers going everywhere and a central government uh, for Europe. So you have to come up with some kind of compromise. And I think the best way is to put the responsibility on the national shoulders. Uh, but that means you actually have to have a very tough fiscal regime, really, for that to be effective. And it's very clear that the Stability and Growth Pact uh, w was just not going to work right from the start. It, it was way too lax, had way too many holes uh, in it. So I think Germany is entirely right, particularly as it could well be picking up the tab and having to buy the bonds of, of countries that are in problems just to say, look, we, we really have to have a very tough regime, uh, even if that cuts through some of the political niceties uh, that, that might otherwise be uh, required by some countries as a form of protocol uh, for, for making everybody feel good about the process.
Thanks very much, Julian. Good to get your thoughts. Julian sure. Callow, their Chief European Economist, Barclays Council.